I have already talked caching in detail in my previous videos where we discuss benefits and challenges of caching, where to place cache, some of the important caching strategies in a large scale system and touch some of the cache eviction policies. At a high level, caching is the technique of storing frequently accessed data in a temporary storage location to improve system performance. It helps to reduce the time and resources required to fetch the data from the original source by serving it quickly from the cache. For example, a web browser caches web pages to load them faster on subsequent visits, and a database system caches frequently accessed query results to avoid expensive database queries. In this short video, I'll be first talking about the concept of centralized cache, discussing its traditional approach and how it operates. Later, we'll shift our focus to distributed caching, uncovering its benefits and showcasing practical examples to demonstrate its real-world applications. So, let's get started. Traditionally, caching has been implemented using a centralized cache, which operates as a single dedicated storage location for frequently accessed data. A centralized cache typically resides between the application and the data source, such as a database or an external API. When a request for data is made, the centralized cache checks if it already contains the requested information. If so, it serves the data directly to the application without the need to access the original source. So here we have an application on one end and a centralized cache at the center, and the data flows between them. When the application requests data, the request first goes to the centralized cache, the cache quickly checks if it contains the requested information. If it does, the response is sent back to the application. If the cache doesn't have the data, the centralized cache system reaches out to the data source, like a database or an external API, to retrieve the data. Once fetched, it goes back to the cache and finally reaches the application. This process reduces the need to fetch frequently accessed data from the original source, enhancing performance and reducing latency. By storing frequently accessed data in close proximity to the application, a centralized cache reduces the latency associated with the retrieving data from the original source. This leads to faster response times and improved overall system performance. The main advantage centralized cache has is its simplicity. It provides a straightforward caching mechanism as all requests and data reside in a single location. This simplicity simplifies cache management and reduces complexity in the system architecture. However, a centralized cache can become a bottleneck as the system grows. Especially with a high volume of concurrent requests, the centralized nature restricts the cache's ability to handle increased traffic efficiently. Additionally, relying on a single cache introduces a single point of failure. In the event of cache failure or downtime, all requests that depend on the cache may face unavailability of the cache data. Now let's move on to explore an even more advanced caching approach, distributed caching. Just like how distributed systems are designed in a way such that their power can be augmented on the fly, be it compute, storage or anything, the same goes for distributed cache. Distributed caching is being primarily used in the industry today for having the potential to scale on demand and being highly available. The centralized cache is hosted on few instances and has a limit to it. It is hard to scale it on fly. Furthermore, it's not so much available and fault tolerant in comparison to distributed caching design. In distributed cache setup, the cache data is distributed across multiple nodes or servers forming a network. Each node holds a portion of the cache data. You can imagine it as a set of interconnected nodes forming the distributed cache network. So in this network, if two nodes go down, the load gets automatically distributed among the remaining nodes and the service is still up. So when a request for data is made, it moves towards the distributed cache network. The distributed cache system then checks if any of the cache nodes have the requested information. The request is directed to that specific node and the node retrieves the response directly from its local cache. Once the data is retrieved, it flows back from the cache node to the application. The distributed caching process enables faster response times and improved performance by serving the data from the cache nodes closest to the application. With this distributed caching approach, the data is efficiently stored and accessed across the cache network, allowing for enhanced scalability, high availability, and optimized performance. Distributed caching has several use cases. Managing user sessions efficiently is a crucial for applications handling authentication and authorization. Distributed caching can be used to store session data such as user tokens, session IDs, and user preferences. This ensures quick and reliable retrieval of session information, enabling seamless user experiences across multiple devices or server instances. 
In-memory distributed caching is a popular option used for message communication between the different microservices running in conjunction with each other. Consider a system with two microservices, an order service and a customer service. The order service is responsible for managing orders and it needs to retrieve customer information to associate with each order. Typically, the order service would make a request to the customer service whenever it needs customer details. However, by utilizing in-memory distributed caching, the order service can avoid making repeated calls to the customer service for the customer information as it first checks if the information is available in the in-memory cache. Now for designing a distributed cache, I will make a separate video. For now, just be aware that distributed cache under the covers is a distributed hash table, which has a responsibility of mapping object values to keys spread across multiple nodes. The distributed hash table allows a distributed cache to scale on the fly. It manages the addition, deletion, failure of nodes continually as long as the cache service is online. And for those who have been following my videos, distributed hash tables I originally mentioned in my peer-to-peer -peer system video. Industry commonly employs popular distributed cache like Memcache, Redis, and Hazelcast. Memcache, utilized by Google Cloud's platform as a service, is a high-performance distributed key value store that effectively reduces database load. It functions as large distributed hash table across multiple machines, enabling constant time data access. Redis, an open source in-memory distributed system, goes beyond caching and supports various data structures such as distributed list, queues, string, sets, and sorted sets. Additionally, Redis is often utilized as a NoSQL data store, offering flexibility beyond caching capabilities. Now, whether it is improving response times, minimizing database queries, or facilitating effective communication between microservices, caching plays a vital role in modern software architecture.